Welcome back uh, to Hot Issues and many thanks indeed for your time. Let's go uh, via Zoom and speak with Professor in Clinic Clinical Microbiology School of Medicine of the Dent and Dentistry at the KNUST, Professor Yaudu Sakuri, Chief. Thank you very much for your time, Prof. Uh, and how are you doing, sir? Very well, thank you, and good evening to your viewers. Prof, our case counts keep rising. What does this mean for us? Are we in grave danger? Um, well, I mean, the, you see, we, 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 need, <clears throat> we need to have a sense of, of, of when these new cases have come mm. and whether new, these new cases are cases that have come after the lockdown was lifted mm. or they're part of the backlog of the uh, uh, um, samples that were taken during the enhanced testing. Um, of the hands tested during, um, during the um, lockdown mm. so that we have a good sense of what is happening. Look, whatever happens, mm. as the enhanced testing tracing goes on, the numbers will go up. Okay, the numbers will go up. Okay. Um, um, but the point is that we need to have a look at it relative to the, the, the number of people uh, uh, um, relative to the population, really, and how fast these numbers are, 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 are going up. The numbers will necessarily have to go up before the plateau. Mm. And we haven't seen when the plateauing is coming. So we shouldn't expect that um, one day the Ministry of Information and Health will come and tell and, and say something, and then we'll say that the numbers have come down. Mm. It, will be, it will depend on the on the rate of increase. Okay. Now, we're told that the disease or virus is regards or heavily based on our respiratory system. How does the testing of blood come in here? I, mean, I thought we'll be looking at uh, other things rather than your blood. Explain to us. Why do we need to test the blood? Uh, not really. I mean, the point is that when, when, uh, um, when the body is infected by a microorganism, it mounts immune responses to it, okay? And those immune responses are mounted from cells within the, that are produced in the blood and other organs, okay? So, 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 so the immunity that is developed against any infection mm. can be detected in the blood wherever the, 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 the infectious process occurs, mm. okay? Yes, yeah, so, so, so it is not unusual okay. uh, 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 to use blood testing. For, for pathogens that are right from other organs, especially when you want to look at the immune response to the infection. Mm. Scientists from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where you are, and Incas Diagnostics have based their, their, in the Ashanti region, have brought out this rapid diagnosis test, which the world is jubilating about. Ghanaians are excited about it. Number one, how long did it take for you to achieve this feat and if we're looking at production costs, what are we looking at? Um, we have been working on this since early March, really. And um, we've been in constant discussion with the, um, the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, and the uh, National COVID Response Team, because mm. we knew that it will get to a point where we need to deploy um, um, antibody-based kits or serologic mm. Be biscuits. I mean, you realize that all over the world, um, every country is talking about developing these rapid test kits. So, so, so we are no different from what other countries have been trying to do, because we knew at the point it would come there. But there are so many samples um, taken from the throat or or with a speech for the diagnosis that comes to Noguchi and KCCR for, for testing. Okay, and there are so many of them. Okay. And they can't do all those alone. Okay. Um, so that was important that you find another means mm. of, of, of helping with this diagnosis. But you see, not only that, um, the PCR-based tests that are done by Noguchi mm. and KCCR detect some aspects of the virus, okay. the genetic material of the, of the virus. Right. Okay. These antibody-based kits detect the immune response of the one infected to the virus. Okay. Okay. And 
the, the these immune responses come in two types. Mm. Okay, the, the 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 antibodies produced come in two types. Okay, there's one we call immunoglobulin M or IgM, mm. another called immunoglobulin G or IgG. Okay, now IgM is always the first to come when one is recently infected or when there's an acute infection. Okay. So when you get a uh, um, COVID-19 infection, mm -hmm. within the first seven days, you are likely to produce an IgM response. Right. Okay. But after the first week, then IgG kicks in. Okay. So you detect IgG, and this IgG can persist for a long time, weeks, months, even years after infection. Okay. So mm -hmm. even if you, when you recover from the infection, an IgG test will pick that up, or an antibody test We'll pick that up. But why is this important? Because Tell me. you want to know the burden of infection. Mm -hmm. Okay. The burden of infection does not only mean those who've recently been infected. Okay. It also includes those who've been infected and recovered. Okay. But unfortunately, the PCR test will not detect those who've been infected and recovered from it. How the useful, Prof. Away. Prof, let me, let me hold your horses a bit. How useful or viable is this test kit? Because... Noguchi, for example, insists that it has to come to the lab, KCCR as well. Now we're being told of a rapid diagnostic test. Is it okay. equal? Um, both the rapid diagnostic test and the PCR test done by Noguchi and KCI all have a place in COVID-19 diagnosis. Okay. I mean, the, 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 the WHO guidelines for lab testing, okay, all tell you that for surveillance purposes, like we are doing for contact tracing, looking for people, mass testing, mm. rapid testing has a place. Okay. But importantly, when one, for diagnosis, when one is infected, one has um, the usual symptoms we talk about, a headache, runny nose, right. cough, sneezing, etc. Okay. When you, that is where you find uh, the bulk of the virus there. Okay. Then Doc that is where uh, um, um, PCR, as done by Noguchi and KCCR, have a place. Okay. So hold on. Hold, 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 hold your answers for on. me, Prof. Let's connect with uh, Dr. Hadi Abdallah. He's a neurologist and a Secretary General of the Islamic Medical Association of Ghana. Doc, many thanks indeed for your time. How are you doing, sir? Hello, Dr. Hadi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Doc, quickly, now 13 regions have recorded cases and we're also told that 13 doctors in Ghana have been affected by the deadly virus. Are you surprised that we are here? No, I'm not, I'm not uh, surprised at all. Why are you um, not surprised? Not ex expected. I mean, um, way back from the beginning when um, this virus uh, pandemic started in Wuhan. We, we knew very well that doctors were were affected. Many mm -hmm. doctors died. Um, as of yesterday, over 100 um, health workers, for example, had uh, died in the UK. Uh, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, the Italians also reported that about 100 doctors have, have died. And um, knowing uh, the fact that a lot of our colleagues all over the country have been calling for, for PPE. Mm. Uh, we knew that um, it was just a matter of time that we were going to have good doctors and other health workers get infected uh, because the issue of the uh, front line uh, had been centered mainly on those who were working at the treatment centers. Okay. You know, and, and not to belabor the point, mm. um, we, we fail to really look at those who are actually the true frontliners because our true frontliners are those who face um, the infection, pick up the infection mm. and mm. notify the, the necessary response team. And then the diagnosis is made because before this uh, patient are sent mm. to the treatment centers. Unfortunately, we, we did not protect those people. Mm -hmm. These true frontliners, we did not protect them. Right. We rather protected those that I would say 
had a back line and back, also very important because, of course, right. you know clearly that they are dealing with mm. uh, the virus and, and they work in centers where they are fully uh, protected, whilst those working in the chief compounds, mm. the various clinics around the country are unprotected. So okay. it's really no surprise at all. So, so and, Doc, and if, if I hear you right, Dr. Dr. Hadi, you're saying that we're doing many things wrong, especially for the frontliners. Now, quick question to you. What does the future look like, especially now that we're doing contact tracing, enhanced contact tracing, and trying to trace the people? What does the future look like for a health worker who doesn't have the PPEs, but still has to go out there to war to try and save us all? Yeah, I, I think one, one of the, the major problems have been with, with the testing. And, and I only hope that uh, with the new kits which have been developed, of course, they have um, their own uh, positives and negatives. Mm. But at least it will help us to pick up uh, positive cases which later on may need um, the, the PCR uh, test. Mm. Uh, because some, some of my colleagues, including myself, had had to wait for several days before we had our, our result, and mm. we still had to go to work, even though we were exposed to, to COVID uh, patients. And if you look at the numbers clearly, you would, you would have realized that uh, most of these doctors and other health workers uh, who have contracted or have been infected are those mm. Uh, are not those working at the treatment center, but those working uh, at the clinics. Okay. So the PPEs must get to those workers. It must get to them, those working at the clinics right. and the emergency. Mm. It must get to them. And if we don't uh, treat this serious and get the PPEs there, when the numbers start increasing and these isolation centers uh, get full, mm. A lot of those infected will start trickling down to these emergencies. When okay. they, and that is what is happening across the world. Right. When okay. they start trickling to the emergencies, these guys will pick the virus. They okay. will still be going home. Uh, they are unprotected. Those who are strong among them will not show any effect. And they will further infect people in the community. So we need to protect doctors, mm. nurses, including even cash collectors at the various clinics and emergencies right. in this country. Okay. There must be also some emphasis on them. Mm. Okay. Hold, hold your horses. Prof, let me come back to you. Doc makes a, a very, very grave point that the people who need the PPEs are not getting the PPEs. We do know that we have a shortfall of health professionals and the clarion call has always been not to overwhelm the people working on the front line because if they break down, we lose the fight. What do you say? What do you see from, from what is being narrated and the doctors that have contracted the virus? I mean, well, look, I'll just make a, sim a simple point, a single point. You cannot send your army to war without getting them what it takes to fight in the war. Full stop. Full stop, that's it? So who should yeah, be... I mean, why, why, why you can't send your army to a war without giving them what it takes to fight the war, can you? What do you expect? And, 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 and unfortunately, I mean, globally, this has been the cry of um, almost all health workers, mm. okay, that they are, they are not getting the necessary, the required PPs from their governments, mm. okay. And, 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 and um, it, it, is, it is not unusual. Look, people walk into hospital um, with, 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 with all kinds of whatever, before that, it is diagnosed that, or it is thought they may have COVID. Right. And later tested, and if they have COVID, sent to a treatment center. Okay. Mm. But whilst in the clinics, they meet other health workers. Mm. Okay. Mm. So that protection, much as it's very important for those that are the, are the treatment centers, it's also very important for every health worker working in a health facility because you never know. And of course, there are levels of PPEs. Right. Anyway. There are levels of PPE. Okay. Because you never know who is going to come. I mean, there are many of these people who are being detected by the hand surveillance mm. are asymptomatic. In other words, they don't have any symptoms right. of COVID infection. Mm. Okay. 
most of these people will not go on to get TV infection, okay? But even though they don't have any symptoms, they can pass it on to anybody. So they won't know they have it. They will come to a clinic with anything, malaria, name it. But then their interaction with the health worker can then pass on the uh, 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 right. virus to the health worker. So, so, and so, also another important thing is that what we often fail to think about is the case that, you see, um, the reason why we need to have this protection for the health workers is that mm. a health worker, him or herself, okay, may be infected without knowing they are infected. Okay. Okay. So they could then pass on their infection to anybody coming to the hospital. Right. So it isn't only somebody coming from out. Mm. Uh, it is only a patient giving it to a health worker. Okay. But it could be the opposite. Right. Dr. Hadi, let me okay, come so, to you so at this we point. Need also to protect the health workers, mm. uh, we need to protect the public against, uh, from the health workers. So most we have anything most grateful, to... Prof. Dr. Hadi, let me come to you quickly. Now, government oh. says we are producing PPEs. In the last address by the, by the, gov the, the president, he mentioned some figures of PPEs that are supposed to have gone out there. And then a local production of 3.6 million face masks where three companies have been marshaled. Is that not satisfactory enough for you? Well, I, I think that's, that's a great initiative, um, especially something being developed uh, locally. Uh, but so, so far as I'm concerned, and many health workers across the country mm. are concerned, I have had uh, reports, some requests, because I heard several uh, groups and I'm part of groups who are trying to also solicit uh, PPEs for health workers across the And I've had several requests, and they are very genuine requests that the PPEs are not coming to them. And these are coming from areas where uh, staff, mm. about six, seven, eight, okay. on, on a day, have tested positive uh, for, for the virus. So I think. As a country, we, need, mm. we, we really need to have a second look at the distribution. Okay. Okay. The, the government may, on paper, be producing the PPC or buying the PPC or even delivering the PPC, but it is not getting down there mm. to those who really need it. And okay. there must be a regime or a system where we can check or track the PPC to make sure that those who really need it are getting the PPC. Okay. Probably... It's being delivered to hospitals, but people are holding mm. it in their offices. And, and that is what really needs to be checked. Okay. Doc, Doc I, I time, have, time is, like, time is almost up. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Our time is almost up. But let me ask you quickly what your thoughts are. The KNUST has been able to come up with a rapid diagnostic test kit for coronavirus with a, a private collaborator. What are your thoughts about this as, as a frontline health worker? Yeah, I think that, that is really wonderful and, and, and hopefully it will be the, the game changer because most of us uh, have been waiting for our results for a very long time. The anxiety uh, is just too much. Some people have had to wait for like almost 14 days before mm -hmm. getting their results and the rapid test would, would really go a long way to help us. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, it will also help us to even pick those, including health workers, who might have been exposed uh, to the virus. I'm mm. sure Prof might have mentioned something like IgM and IgG right. uh, to you. Yes, one telling us about recent infection, one about past infection. But those who have had past infection and look mm. good. Going forward, we can actually take their serum okay. and probably inject it in, in people who have like serious infection to see whether the antibodies could fight um, the, the infection. Mm. So there's a lot to be excited about this. Uh, rapid test that has been developed from Ghana. And I'll say kudos to Prof and his team. Okay. And uh, we look forward to to more innovations and also collaborations with a team uh, like his. Okay. What, what, 30 seconds for you and for Prof. If you meet the president today, what would you say to him in order to better the fight against COVID-19? I'll come to you, Prof, on 30 seconds for that. Hadi, let's go. Well, I'll just, I'll just say that um, there's a lot to do. We know there's a fight. We all need to fight. And the, uh, so far as I'm concerned, the government is doing well with the right leadership. And we need more of such to encourage everybody to put in their best. 
Never okay. know when this COVID-19 is going to go away. Right. And we may be in for a bit of a haul. Okay. So Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Hadi, you have the final word. What, what do you say to the president? Yeah, if, if I meet the president, um, I would uh, congratulate him for a good job done. And I'll make a statement that I made almost about six weeks ago, that uh, humans create economy, and economy does not create people. And in any decision that we take, we must put that in our mind. If you lose one doctor, you've lost almost a doctor to 10,000 population right. in Ghana and most parts of Africa. Hmm. Thank you. I thank you very much for your time. My, my guest uh, via phone has been Dr. Hadi Abdullah. He's a neurologist, secretary general of the Islamic Medical Association of Ghana. And also uh, my guest via Zoom is Professor Yao Edusakode. He's a professor in clinical microbiology, School of Medicine and Dentistry at the KNUST. And uh, that's where we draw the curtains on hot issues for tonight. Many thanks to the production team, Kamala Kluche, Babina Finwalk and the rest of the team for uh, uh, being out there. Stay safe. Wash your hands, stay at home. If you don't have to go out, many thanks to Grandpa for my outfit. See you next Thursday.